we're going to get into it. So we're talking okay. about, yeah, we're talking about um, maintaining your gains and navigating the holidays. I feel like this is a really, really useful discussion because if you don't go into the holidays with a little bit of an intention, um, you know, for some people it can be a problem. So I think a little intention really, really goes a long ways. All right. So if we start with acknowledging what it is that we want, why we're here. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, I think, you know, for most of us, it almost always, I was talking to a nutrition cohort of mine yesterday and it's like, it almost always boils down to body composition and just feeling good yeah, and good health over time. So, so this is why we're here. This is why we keep showing up. And I really, really, really uh, applaud you guys for showing up because showing up is part of it, right? As you stay engaged with things, um, that engagement unconsciously helps you be more diligent with what it is that you're doing because you're constantly being exposed to this stuff. So how do we maintain gains? First of all, you have to ask yourself if it is important to maintain your gains. Now, what I mean by gains is the gains that we've worked so hard for throughout the year. And for most of us, that starts somewhere in January. You got your New Year's resolutions. You want to kick the year off right. You got the summer coming up. You want to look better. Um, you know, and, and we work really hard throughout the year. And I put this talk together because I know that the holidays is a place that people um, kind of have a hard time. Okay. So start by asking yourself, is maintaining my gains important to me? What happens to me if I, if I do put in the work to maintain my gains, is it worth it? Is it worth the extra effort? Is it worth missing out on some of the things that I would normally indulge in? Um, what happens if I don't put in the work? Is it worth the pain and the risk? Right. Those are some questions you can ask yourself right now. I think we're all probably going to be, uh, similar answers, which is, yeah, it's probably worth it with some intention and some flexibility, because that's really what we want to do. We want we don't want to be so rigid that we can't enjoy ourselves, especially when we're uh, hanging out with family and friends and things. Um, so pro tip, you must guard your progress during the holiday season because the holiday season is where most people fall off and never fully recover. I can't even tell you how many times um, this is the most dangerous part of the year for most people. OK, if you're not there, awesome, because I'm, uh, I'm I'm saying if you're if you're not at risk because you're so confident in what it is you're doing, that's great. That's where I'm at. I do allow some flexibility and that's where I want everyone to get to. But the reality is that this is where people tend to slip inside a little bit. I have a great video that I did. I don't know if it was last year, a couple of years ago. And this is based on a conversation I had with one of my um, longtime clients, Maurice. He's the guy that was insulin resistant, 450 pounds. You know, now he's down to like two two. 40 or something like that. Um, but anyway, this, this video is awesome. So in the post associated with this in Superhumans United, I'll have this video. I highly recommend uh, watching it because it gives you some tips and strategies on how to slip and not slide, how to build in some flexibility. I think it's really relevant for uh, the holidays. So this is what we're going to cover today. Um, hopefully it's going to be maybe like 30 minutes. Okay. And then we'll have some open discussion, but again, you can unmute. We've got a small group. You can throw some stuff in the chat. Um, so how to maintain gains, create a vision for your health and self, identify your obstacles, visualize the holiday season and situations. I love situational visualizing. Stick to your health routine. Super crucial. Come up with your personal drop dead time, zero hours and amounts. And I'll explain what that is. And then also make sure that you have SHT approved alternatives for your favorite holiday recipes if you choose to. Now, if you just choose to indulge and, and things are made with slightly uh, um, less than optimal ingredients, then that's totally fine too. All right. So this is what we're doing. Have a vision for optimal health and self in life. Okay. Goes without saying, uh, most of you that have been with me for any amount of time, you know, at some point we always do some kind of uh, vision work or goals or values, you know, those things kind of combined. We're always finding new ways to work with that. Um, but I do want to emphasize maybe it would be useful to have a, a vision specifically for the holiday season. And this does not take a lot of work. So I have a, a worksheets put together. This is PDF. I'll send that out to everyone. I highly encourage you to just take the time to print it out and go through this information. Okay. So <clears throat> things to consider as you're creating your personal vision for the holidays, how do you want to look? How do you want to feel? How do you, how do you want to be seen? Now, again, I welcome feedback to make this better. I'm thinking about myself. When I go see my family for the holidays, I want to look freaking jacked and strong and healthy and vibrant. I want to walk the, I want to walk the talk. Okay. So 
I think like this, like, how do I want to be seen? How do I, even in my actions, you know, I want to be an example. I want to be a leader. I don't want to be stuck up about it, but I do want to, you know, walk the walk, talk the talk, you know, however that goes. Okay. Um, and then how do you want to handle these important decisions specifically, you know, around the holidays? So I have a way for us to kind of work on building up to a vision statement for yourself. So the first question in this worksheet is, what are the changes that I've worked so hard for this year? What am I proud of? What is it that I want to maintain? This literally takes less than a minute. You can bullet point out the things that you're very proud of uh, accomplishing this year as far as your health goes. Body composition changes, symptom changes, improvements, energy levels, all the things that we cover in our subjective assessments, digestion, I mean, you name it, right? And and all those things probably took a decent amount of work. So you want to acknowledge the things that you've seen change in a positive direction. Next is what things am I absolutely committed to avoiding? And this is going to be different for everyone, okay? Um, this is where we can build in some flexibility. For me, I'm absolutely always going to avoid highly processed plant-based oils. If I know that they're in it, you know, like it's just, it's, that's a deal breaker for me. And my um, easy re rationale or reason for that, if I have to explain to someone is that um, I either have a sensitivity to it, or I like to say, I, I just, I, I can't do it because it makes me feel horrible, you know, and I want to be here and enjoy this experience with you guys. So list out, what are the things I'm absolutely committed to avoiding? Um, and if you need help with that, just let me know. Like, you know, we can chat that out. You can, you can, we can talk about it here. Suzanne says, I want to always look healthy, have energy, and have clear mind. Poor food choices disrupts everything. Absolutely. I truly hate how I feel when I eat. <laughs> I know, right? It's almost never worth it unless you're just, you know, you're consciously taking part in, you know, your aunt's pie or something like that. So, all right. The next question, again, we're building up to creating a, just a really simple vision. Again, this whole worksheet shouldn't take more than like five minutes. What things am I going to allow myself to indulge in? And if so, how much, how often, when? What are these things? So we all probably have an idea. We get together. I use the example all the time. If I, if I see my Aunt Carol who has makes her apple pie that I remember from high school, I'm not going to not eat that. Now, she makes it with wholesome ingredients, but it does have wheat. But she uses butter and you know apples and stuff like that. So um, her pecan pie, oh my gosh, like it's amazing. So I'm going to allow myself to have a small piece of that. I'm not, and I'm not going to beat myself up over it. So there's certain things, um, like for me, most of you know, my weakness is alcohol, okay? I'm not alcoholic. I don't have a problem with it, but um, that's just uh, me acknowledging that's where I like to indulge. So when it's the holiday season, I'm hanging out with my sister and her husband, we're playing ping pong, like I'm probably going to do some day drinking, okay, when I'm down there. So acknowledge the things that you are considering allowing yourself to indulge in. And then also maybe how much, you know, what specific things, you know, if you can get clear on that, that would be really, really useful. And then what are my cutoff times for specific things like coffee, caffeine, alcohol, TV, bedtime? Uh, this is useful for me. It's been useful for some of my clients and previous people that attend these talks to just have a conscious, deliberate intention. You know, I'm still not going to drink coffee afternoon, personally, um, because regardless of whether I indulge in some drinks or something and that disrupts my sleep, at least I don't have the caffeine messing with me. Um, I I'm not going to have alcohol past uh, 6 p.m. ever on vacation. So I just have these little rules for myself. So something to think about, right? A little intention goes a long way. All right. And then you can just combine all that stuff into a vision statement for yourself specific to the holidays. Okay. This vision statement you could print out and put up somewhere. You could screenshot it, put it on your phone. Um, a little intention goes a long way. All right. Now, pro tip. Allow yourself to indulge in a special treat, but don't rationalize coming back and snacking on it just because it's there and just because you allowed yourself to have a small piece of it. This came to me today. I think what happens sometimes, you know, like um, I'm over at uh, uh, my in-laws and, and her mom, you know, maybe makes this amazing pie and it's got some wheat in it. And I do too good on wheat, but hey, you know, it's the holidays. I'm gonna have a piece of it. And then I could easily find myself coming back and having another piece of pie, snacking on it, having it with, you know, every, I have to draw some lines somewhere. Okay. So I thought this was just a useful statement for myself. Maybe it'd be useful for you. All right, next. And this is in the worksheet. Okay. We first started out with creating a vision for ourselves for the holidays. Now we want to identify obstacles. Again, a little intention goes a long way. Just putting a little bit of thought towards this can be extremely beneficial and useful. 
So what are your foreseen obstacles during the holiday season? What uh, do you see keeping you from maintaining or, or sticking to your vision? And you can name out these specific obstacles. And then when you do, come up with some ideas on, on um, how to work with it, okay? So I have some examples here. I list out um, ideas not having access to a gym. You know, so if I'm traveling, um, I don't want to pay a drop in fee every every day that I'm, you know, gone for a week or something like that. What do I do about a gym? Being a guest in a home that doesn't eat SHT, right? That's a legitimate obstacle. Staying in a hotel, that's a real relative obstacle there. So we could maybe just, I, I was thinking we could do a little exercise here. So let's just, as an example, we're going to brainstorm, all right? Um the gym situation. What if I, I don't have access to a gym? What is a solution to not having access to a gym? Because I'm a workout fanatic, right? If I go and I travel somewhere and, you know, I'm just not willing to pay for a lot of money for drop-ins and things. Anybody have any, any recommendations for me? And then it said body weight workout. So definitely um, in place stuff, right? Most of us are probably familiar enough with, uh, with fitness that we we would know how to do that ourselves. So, and that's exactly what I do when I'm traveling. Like I'm come hell or high water, if I'm not at a gym, you know, I'm going to do my walk and I'm going to come back and I'm going to sit and meditate and then I'm going to I'm going to do something. And usually, I can find like a kettlebell or a dumbbell or something like that. But any other ideas? What do you do if you're traveling and you can't work out because you don't have a gym? Well, no, I shouldn't say you can't work out, but Enjoy the outdoors. Just get outside. Go for a jog. Boom. Go for a jog. Go for a hike. Um, you know, all trails. You know, you pull up all trails app on your phone. You can find a trail nearby. I literally, you know, you drive five minutes down the road and go find a trail. Swim hotel pool. Yeah, if you got access to a pool in, in the hotel. I, I think, you know, just having this mentality to stick to the things that make you feel good. There's no reason that just because it's the holiday season, you have to give up these things. And and I feel like that's, and it's fine if you decide to do that consciously, but I feel like a lot of people, it's, oh, it's the holiday, I'm busy, I'm on vacation, I'm just going to let myself go, and I'm going to skip these things. And and again, that's a slippery slope. So so that was that would be what we do with our foreseen obstacles. Again, this does not take much time at all. A little intention goes a long way. Just list out your obstacles and list out like what are some some things that I can do to mitigate these things. Next would be to visualize specific situations. I love doing this for everything. Okay, this is how I I don't forget things. I still forget things sometimes, but I'm way better at not forgetting things. Okay, so if I go backpacking. I visualize situations, okay? Meaning I visualize myself, the, the whole trip, you know, leaving the vehicle, um, the hike there, taking breaks. What do I use on my breaks? You know, what's happening on the hike? What happens when I get to my my uh, camp uh, setup situation? I go through visualizing setting. Oh, that means I forgot this little thing or I forgot my stakes or forgot my rope or forgot my tarp. I go through dinner, Making dinner, you know, what does that involve? Having food, you know, having my cooking utensils, starting fire. I go through uh, waking up in the morning, coffee, cold, you know, oh, need my beanie. Can't forget my beanie, right? So if you visualize yourself going through situations like it's a movie, it will help you remember things. So I think that's useful to do for the holidays. If you visualize situations in the holidays, um, that will help you prepare for maybe challenging situations, or at least remember to bring or, or do things or have things available. Okay. So here I have some examples. Um, the plane flight, you know, what do you need for a plane flight? Well, when you go to the airport, do you need snacks? Do you need, you know, make sure that you have certain things in your backpack, your pack, um, a car ride that may imply that you want to make sure that you have um, a cooler and, and foods and, um, you know, maybe some uh, weather gear, gloves, raincoat, things like that. You can even visualize like Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, staying at someone's home if you know that's going to happen. And as you visualize that and go through it like it's a movie from the time you get there, time to go to bed, you wake up, you know, the day of the deal, like it really, really does help. OK, so I'll give you some spaces here to visualize some situations, name the situation and then come up with some ideas on how you can navigate that situation optimally. Okay. All right. The next point is commit to daily health, even when you don't feel like it. I think this is so important on the holidays. And especially if you're going to indulge, it almost helps you feel justified in indulging or going off plan just a little bit. 
Um, I think really important here is to maximize the things that you that um, your wins in the first part of the day, because that number one, you you get those out of the way. So there's not a chance of you putting it off or brushing it off later. And then number two, you get some momentum from these things that you're doing. And it probably is going to help you make better decisions throughout the rest of the day. OK, so if we had to focus on what are the ideal things that I need to have as part of my routine that I probably have as part of my routine right now that I want to consider keeping as I uh, go throughout the holidays, it would be rise time, fitness, your real food uh, plan, personal quiet time, and then bedtime. Now, as we transition into a holiday situation, I think about, again, going to my sister's, my dad, my other sister's coming there, you know, it's, you know, we're staying at her place. Some of these things are going to get a little lax. So this is just me. And again, this is just something that you can think about. My rise time, I may let myself sleep in a little bit. It's almost impossible because I'm so habituated to where I'm at right now with things. Um, even when I try to sleep in, I'm just, I'm so set with my circadian rhythms. My feet start to wiggle at the same time every morning. You know, it's, it's almost impossible. It really is. But but I may allow myself some flexibility there. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you what, it does feel good getting up before everyone else, making my coffee, going on my walk, coming back, meditating, working out. And by the time I get done with all that, <laughs> everyone's still asleep, you know. But anyway, um, for fitness, you know, so we've already mentioned, you know, I, the, some of you may work out in the afternoon and evening, which is totally fine, but maybe consider uh, during um, a holiday situation or where you're traveling and staying at someone's place and there's a risk for you to, to indulge and do things later in the day and this get brushed off, maybe just make it temporarily a part of your morning deal. Okay. So we've already said, go for a morning walk. I think that's great. I think for me personally, and I try to encourage this with people. As soon as you wake up and do your thing and, and use the bathroom and, and if you got to brush your teeth, whatever you like to do there, make your coffee. I think even if you're working out in the morning, even if you're working out later, um, going for a brief walk just sets a tone for the day. I love stepping outside in the twilight before anyone else is up. It's super quiet. All I hear is some road noise or something. Um, and just going for a short walk with some time with my own mind. I absolutely love that. You know, And then I may come back and actually do a dedicated workout or something. So. For fitness, um, we, I, I feel like it's really useful to keep that in the deal and, and load that at the first part of the day. Now, for real food, <clears throat> this is where we're probably going to allow ourselves some flexibility. But if you get the first meal right or the first part of the day right and you emphasize protein, I'm telling you, it's going to minimize cravings. OK, it's going to minimize your desire to go off plan because you know what it's like when you haven't eaten and then you eat something kind of junky. And then like, it's just a snowball, right? So if you start the day off with a good protein-based meal, that's going to satiate you and um, you'll probably have less of a risk of falling off and indulging. And again, maybe you want to allow yourself to indulge, but but it's just that you'll, you'll have a, less of a biological desire to do it, right? So I think that's really important too. Get your first meal of the day right. If you're not used to eating breakfast, Maybe consider eating breakfast and having a really good protein-based initial meal and then allow yourself some flexibility throughout the rest of the day, okay? Um, and then for personal quiet time, for me, it's non-negotiable. I, I know for a lot of people, it's it's kind of, it's easy when you're in your your setup and your, in your routine, your situation at home. Um, when you when you move away from that situation, some of these things, is, you don't even realize it, you just kind of forget it. And, and I've been there before. But that's why I like to have it stack. You know, I, I wake up, I go down, use the bathroom, get my coffee, and then I go for my walk. And then the walk is my trigger to sit and meditate. And then my meditation is my trigger to do a little workout, or sometimes I swap those two. But so if quiet time is important to you, there's no reason that has to, um, to go away when you're traveling or uh, on the holidays. And it's about showing up and doing these things. It's not even about the amount of time. So if I'm used to sitting down and meditating for 18 minutes every morning, but now I'm in this unfamiliar situation, slightly uncomfortable. I can still sit for a minute. You know, I mean, all of us have that, right? So, and then bedtime, again, maybe it's just a little flexible. You're staying up with the family, you know, watching a movie. We love to watch Star Wars. We have Star Wars nonstop on repeat, you know, the whole time that we're at my sister's, you know, starting with the first episode all the way through and we go back. And then also National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So, um, so. You know, that's just uh, considering what are the most important things. Sticking to the routine is extremely beneficial because at least you got that right. And then if you indulge and you go off plan, at least you did these things and you can feel good about that. So and probably what's going to happen is 
at the worst, you'll just maintain what you what, where you're at, right? You're not going to get worse and put on a lot of weight or just feel really horrible because you front loaded the day with the most beneficial things, right? Let's see. And then, uh, yeah, I know. I agree, Suzanne. Mornings are just the absolute best. Now, uh, I'm throwing in here my little guidelines for solitary walk. Um, if you follow me on social media, I used to do a lot of this. Um, I love solitary walks. And that means your phone is off in airplane mode or even better, you leave it behind or I put it in my backpack, which feels like I've left it. Okay, There is absolutely no temptation to look at it or um, you know, just having it on your person and it being on unconsciously feels different having it on your person and being off. Like, you know, that you're untouchable, you're unreachable. Okay. And I think a morning walk with your own mind, I call it own mind time is extremely beneficial. And this isn't like meditation. This isn't trying not to think this is allowing yourself to think about whatever the heck it is that you want, because once the day starts and you start interacting with other people and your computer and your phone, then you've got other minds in the mix. This is for me, the only time with my own mind and I cherish this time. And I, I literally let myself just think about whatever I want. Now, I do notice if I'm getting negative about something or brooding over something, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pull away from that and listen and come back and maybe focus on something positive. Sometimes I'll have an intention for my walk, you know, like I have a talk coming up. So I'm like, all right, so my intention for this walk is I just want to go through my little initial intro or something like that. Okay. So solitary walks, freaking amazing. And then now that we've acknowledged, okay, so these are the things that we could front load our day with to set a tone for the day, then it's useful to visualize a perfect day. Now, I do this with a lot of my clients, and it's a very useful exercise. Brianna had asked inside the community, like, how do I, I forgot how she worded it, but she said something like, you know, um, let's go see what she said. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's dead. How to continue, she said, question, do you guys have any ideas on how to how I continue to incorporate our lifestyle alongside my current schedule because it's pretty intense? So, um, you know, Sarah and I just did this. We sat down and we said, okay, what's important to us? Uh, we have this little worksheet. It's called My Perfect Day. And we think, okay, what are the most important things? Well, we just kind of went through them. Now visualize where do these fit in in the day? If it's a vacation specific one, we've already talked about maybe it's useful to kind of try to fit those in the first part of the day. But why go through the pain? Or I shouldn't say pain. Why go through this exercise? Because a little intention goes a long ways. And as soon as I put this down, I've already visualized how that's going to happen. And I'm way more likely to do that. Okay. So and this is a resource that I'll put with this video along with all the other resources. Okay. So, and this is a part of um, this, this piece of um, sticking to your health routine and then figuring out where to fit it in. So this is an example here. Um, you know, you could do it like this. I didn't put times here because, you know, times are gonna be different for everyone. Wake up, drink water, personal quiet time. And this could be like, you know, 5 a.m., personal quiet time, 5.30, you know, uh, solitary walk, 5.45, uh, workout, as soon as I get back, you know, 6 o'clock, first meal, 9 a.m., and then boom, enjoy the rest of the day. Hopefully we get it, get to bed at a decent hour, All right? And then you can, you can customize this to yourself. So I think it's just super useful. I'll say it 100 times, a little intention goes a long way. All right, and then finally, <clears throat> oh, we're making a really good time. Hey, stop. Um, dog's looking herself. Other tools. I made this poster for Fred. Fred was like, I have a problem snacking. I know that that's probably one of my biggest problems right now. He's trying to do two meals a day with no snacking. And it's just really tempting being in a household that has um, kids and snacks and stuff everywhere all the time, right? So we made a poster for the fridge and he taped it up on the fridge. And he says, works. You know, he said he feels like he's being watched all the time by me. And I asked him, I said, do you mind if I share this? He's like, absolutely. Go for it. So, so some things, some other tools you can use. I'd be happy to help you with something like this, or you can just make your own. I think little reminders, you know, vision statements, um, positive affirmations, and then things like this, you know, put on the cupboard, you know, step back, stay away, reflect, whatever. I think this could be useful. Yep. 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 Um, <clears throat> this was a useful poster. So this is also, you know, me and Fred had this conversation, right? I, I, we had, it's always useful to come back and review some of our, our primary concepts. All right. And one of them is that our bo excess body fat is there. It's stored energy for periods of not eating. It's an evolutionary adaptation of starvation. And therefore, if I want to teach my body how to use my own body fat for fuel, I have to go through periods of not eating. This is our rationale for no snacking, whether it's two meals a day or three meals a day or one meal a day or whatever. 
right? So just a good little reminder, you know, I'll, I'll have this available. You can print it out. Um, this is a, this is a plug for not snacking. Now, as I'm on the holidays, I'm emphasizing protein every time I eat. First of all, I just do that anyway, but I feel amazing, but especially on holidays because it helps mitigate my cravings. And then I'm committed to not just walking by and just grabbing snacks the whole time. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you decide to do that and that's your deal and that's your flexibility point, perfectly fine. But for me, I'm just like, I'm going to be really clean and spot on the whole freaking day. I'm going to have my protein meal. I'm not going to snack at all. And then when it comes time to you know, enjoy dinner and, and things with the family, then I'll maybe let myself indulge a little bit. Yeah, pro tip. Now, protein is the most satiating of the macronutrients. Prioritize and emphasize protein. It will curb your hunger and it will minimize your cravings. Not just during the holidays, all the time. Other resources. We've got uh, uh, updated two documents that are really, really useful. We just updated it. Um, uh, what was the talk that we did that for? Anyway, we just did this here recently. And it was uh, navigating uh, your real foodness while on the road and traveling and then strategies for, um, I call them two different documents. But anyway, they have a lot of great things about ordering at restaurants, um, ordering fast food, packing your cooler and things like that. Here we go. I thought this, I thought this was hilarious. All right, nice. I've cooked Thanksgiving dinner for 25 years. For two years, I was the one man Thanksgiving helpline for the New York Times. I can tell you exactly how to make a great Thanksgiving, but you're going to have to follow these rules. You will make a turkey. Turkey is why you are here. This isn't a holiday for a beef tenderloin or a piece of swordfish or a goose. It's for a turkey. No appetizers, no salads. There will be a plate full of turkey, mashed potatoes, dressing, gravy, cranberry sauce, Brussels sprouts, green beans. There's plenty of food. The smells alone will be appetizing enough. There is no place in Thanksgiving for an appetizer or a salad. You can have salad tomorrow. Television is okay. Football is part of this holiday too. If you have guests who want to watch the Cowboys game, go ahead and let them. Give them a drink. Make pie. Thanksgiving, that most American of holidays, calls for pie, for apple pie, for pecan pie, for pumpkin pie. Don't serve chocolate. Save chocolate for nights of depression, for nights of anxiety. But for Thanksgiving, the article is pie. Clean up before bed. You have plenty of people to help you. Do not be afraid to delegate. You do not want to clean up in the morning filled with a hangover, a food hangover, the vague regret that you did not clean up the night before. Give thanks. That is, after all, the point of the whole holiday. On Thanksgiving, we gather together as a nation to give thanks to one another. There's nothing wrong with that. It's our secular holiday. It's our secular feast. Thanksgiving. Give thanks. I thought that was great. <laughs> he has so many good points in there. Um, oh, there's something he said right there at the end. I wanted to. Oh, the cleanup. You know, the clean. The regretting not cleaning up the night before. I can't stand getting up in the morning and having a bunch of dishes, and um, and everything's dried on the dishes and things like that. So yeah. All right. So and I'll share the link to that video so you guys can share it with other people too. Now I have an updated recipe book and um, inspired by that guy. And just, um, you know, just the traditional dishes in general. At the beginning of the guide, I have a list of traditional Thanksgiving dishes. I kind of like his mentality of like, you know, you don't have to veer from this. Although you can, you can do whatever the heck you want, you know. Um, so I have that. And then we have a bunch of uh, recipes that are tried and true that we've used over the years in here in a few editions. I got my um, almost world famous pecan pie, pumpkin pie, sweet potato pies in there. Those are really, really great. Um yeah, and then I've got a bunch of resources that I want to share with you guys, okay? Um, if we go to, I'm just going to share some of them right now. Um, so first of all, you have plenty of time because we have a, what do we have, like a two or three weeks, right? To order a book and get it in. One of my favorite holiday books is Daniel Walker's. She has a blog called Against All Grain, um, her Celebrations Cookbook, and it's awesome. It's just got recipes for the holidays. It's really, really great. 
Um, I've gifted that to some people. Um, I think Delish is a really, really good web website. So um, you can search for paleo recipes and those are pretty much going to jive with SHT or you can do primal recipes and that's going to jive with SHT. Um, usually keto, you know, jive with that, although we're not trying to be low carb. Um, but keep in mind to shitify things, you can always make sure that you add things that, um, may, you know, paleo is famous for eliminating dairy. Well, we're fine with dairy if you, if you tolerate it. So you can always enhance your recipes or give them a little bit more flexibility. But I'm going to share these links because I did a lot of research into uh, what I felt like were the most useful and simple recipe sources out there. I've got this delish one here that I'll share the link to. Um, I came across this half-baked harvest. It's not... Um, you know, SHT or paleo or prime or any of that kind of stuff, but they have really good traditional recipes that you could shitify by taking out the gluten or replacing it with some kind of flour or something like that, right? Um, the Primal Palette is a really, really great resource. And so they have uh, cookbooks, but they also have this webpage here, 50 Paleo Thanksgiving Recipes, and it's just got a ton of really, really great stuff. And then um, finally, you know, Mark Sisson's uh, Primal uh, Mark's Daily Apple website, he has a ton of recipes and he's got a, re a Thanksgiving recipe roundup that I'll be sharing with everybody as part of all this stuff. So um, just to review what I am going to drop into the post and then um, Sarah is not a part of the community yet, but I'll just e email this to her. Um, we have the worksheet that I'll be giving to you guys. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, all the pro tips I always export as images that you can put up if you want to. I've got the perfect day handout that I'll make available. I've got some example posters that I'll make available. I've got the strategies for eating out, strategies for traveling. And then I've got the recipe resources, including our recipe booklet, and then links to the different recipe sources we talked about there. Final thing, I was working on this today. You guys tell me if this seems like it's useful to you or not. Um, this is uh, my checklist for traveling, travel checklist. And um, and I can put this in the group and I can make it as a post so it's editable and you guys can contribute to it. So I have uh, my cooler checklist, which has, this is what I personally take with me when I go places, okay? Got my ice, frozen bone stock, frozen ground beef, pre-cooked burger patties, fresh eggs, hard boiled eggs, baked sweet potatoes, oven roasted carrots, butter, cream, sparkling water, zavia, yogurt, berries, if I miss anything, let me know, but I'll post it and you'll have a chance to comment on it. Um, my uh, non-cooler stuff, I've got instant coffee, coffee beans for Arnica, uh, coffee cup canteen, supplements, collagen, bone stock canteen, element tea packets, beef sticks, beef jerky, a five gallon water uh, jug, jug of water, canteen for water. And then I've got like clothes type stuff, toiletries, workout shorts, workout shirts, long sleeve shirt, pants, thermal layers, light jacket, warm jacket, rain jacket, work, workout shoes, uh, nice shoes. I got some Wittens that I use with dress pants, cold weather shoes, beaver hat, beanie, gloves, blue blockers, backpack, sleep kit. It's most everything. So I'll share that in the group too. If you guys have anything to contribute, let me know. And I think that's about all I got. Questions, comments. What do we got? Before you leave, you have to unmute yourself and say something, even if it's bye. Good info. Okay. Hey, what's up, Kathy? <laughs> well, then just listen away. Good info. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, it's all, all you guys contributing over Hopefully the Hopefully it'll keep me on track this year. <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, I, what, was, what was most useful about it? What are you going to use or take away from it? Um, uh, the routines. The, you know, the rise time fitness. The, you know, and just... Um, my daily vision for my perfect day yeah yeah super useful for me too yeah because i find I when i eat, eat a good breakfast mm -hmm. um then the rest of the day goes great that's right yeah and we're so used to fasting you know I've, I've, I've been doing this breakfast protein challenge for a while that's changed things you know like um but it's, it's uh one of the big things is i just had zero appetite most of the day you know, so yeah i get to dinner oh cool uh, were you going to say something, Sarah? Was that you? Uh, yeah, it was me. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> I thought I could insert. Um, I like the idea of um, uh, envisioning kind of like what choices you're going to make and just kind of going through the scenarios. I think that's helpful. Yeah, the situations, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like, like that part. Yeah, I, I found um, because you backpack at all? I'm assuming you backpack, right? Or we, no? not a ton. Okay. 
Well, you know, if you go backpacking, you're basically living off of what you got on your back, right? And if you forget something, like it's not a good thing. And I learned mm-hmm. the hard way a couple of times. I'm like, checklists are fine. But for some reason with a checklist, I don't know what my mentality is. I'll go through it and I'll just like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go back and get that. Or like, and I just forget the stuff still. But if I go through situations as I'm packing my stuff, it's just like, okay, well, I get any, ooh, I need this for that, that, you know, so yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, Paul. Hey. Hey, this was great. And it, it, we work so hard all year long and we lose it so quickly yeah. over that 10 day period or that November to January one, right? right that's right. And then we, and I did that for years where I would have to get back in the swing of things. And I just, I realized this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. We go all year long and we're, we're mindful and conscious and, you know, doing our best to, to manage it all with our health. And then this time period, November to January, we just let it go to hell. Mm-hmm. Excuse my French. But it, it, and I think once you get your arms around that time period in life and you learn how to, you know, manage that, it, it all, it all comes together. And yeah. so, yeah. No. Um, and there's two, there's two pains that I always say too, right? The pain of, um, of uh, regret and the pain of discipline. So, Ooh, you either uh, you got to pick your pain you pick your pain uh-huh. so either i'm going to remain disciplined in that pain or i'm going to have the pain of regret and i always hated when i slip and slide and yeah. and i beat myself up worse than anyone yeah. to me so, yeah. so that helps me yeah yeah no i love it i love that quote too but um yeah it's it's just it is sad it's the holidays where a lot of us and, and we beat ourselves up about it. we don't like the way we feel about it and then you get to this point where it's like it's just, you know, for a lot of us, you know, and again, you can build in your flexibility. I allow myself to do some things yeah. that I probably wouldn't do as much here, but um, at some point you just get to where it's like, it's just not worth it. And and it's like, it's almost like the holidays is the ultimate test. You know, if I can, if I can stick to my routine during the holidays and if I can be an example of who it is that I want to be, and if I can, you know, show up at my best during that time period, the rest of the year yeah. is a piece of cake. Right. Of cake. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. A piece of your cake. Yeah, a piece of my pie. <laughs> your pie. <laughs> yes, but thank you so much. This was very yeah. insightful. I enjoyed the time. Cool. Yeah, good to have you.